How should you negotiate your PhD offer? Well, freaking congratulations. You got a PhD offer with full funding, which means they are paying your stipend, they're paying your tuition, your healthcare, probably a few other things, right? So typically when you get an admission letter, on that letter, there's an offer and it tells you the dollar amount they're going to pay you each year on top of your tuition and healthcare, which is your stipend. That's what you are going to live off of. That is an offer that can be anywhere from twenty-five to $45,000 a year. I know it depends on the school, depends on the location, department, all the things. So how do you negotiate it? Well, here's the deal. It's kind of like when surgeons become surgeons and they get their first fellowship it's still a training and there's not really a negotiation, right? That rate is decided way above them. That rate is decided not on an individual person level, it's decided on a role level. So just like, you know, when you get a job offer, you're like, hey, I can negotiate that. So I should probably be able to negotiate this, right? Well, you can negotiate your job offer as long as it stays within the salary band. And that's true here with the PhD, but the salary ban is just like that, right? It doesn't really exist <laughs> because of this, right? The university sets that rate, then they set it for each department. And, you know, you don't want those biases. You don't want them offering a different rate to Natalie that they're offering to you, right? Because you're all going to be doing the same thing. So that is really there to protect you. I'm the university as well, right? They've got they've got to keep their, their behind covered as well. So for me, I had three offers at the same time from three different prestigious universities in the US. School A paid me the most, you know, B middle, and then C was lower. And so I told the other two schools, hey, this is my offer over here. Like, can you do anything about that? They were basically like, no, because again, this was all set up before I showed up on the scene, right? They didn't write an offer just for Natalie. It's for this position. And right? We have to take into cost of living. You know, it, <laughs> it, that's the thing that all these schools are trying to do in order to, you know, keep top talent. But what I will say, a couple of things you can do, depending on your offer. If it's a nine month offer, you could ask, hey, could I do a 12 month offer? That means you're going to be working an extra three months, but technically the offer, you know, dollar amount per year will be larger that's something you can think about. You can also ask about outside fellowships and funding. So again, while the university might have a rate of 30,000 a year, maybe a fellowship is 40,000. You can apply for that and then you're essentially, you know, paying yourself that $40,000 salary every year from the fellowship that you earned. So that's also an option. But as far as asking the university to, you know, give you an extra 10,000 because they like you, it's very unlikely. You can always ask, right? Like you should ask, like what's the worst that can happen? But I just want to paint a clear picture about negotiating here. Again, this is an offer. You can always reject it if it doesn't meet your needs. But if you are very excited about this program and it's a couple thousand dollars difference or whatnot, you know, you have to ask yourself if that's, if that's worth it to you to forego this offer. So Think about your offer and what it's really giving you in terms of your tuition, your health care, maybe some travel stipend, you know, your living stipend and, and just like all the time that it's giving you to really devote to this task. So hope that helped you and good luck negotiating.